Healthy, freestanding corals are becoming less common. For example, the Caribbean coral monastery of Franksai show the irreversible effect of devastating disturbances with the eventual outcome of algal overgrowth where once stood a large biomass of coral. What allows a coral to become overgrown with algae and the inevitable outcome of mortality is a story that must first be recognized by the processes that allow a healthy reef to persist. The dynamics of nutrients and carbon on a healthy coral reef follow a series of checks and balances resulting in the maintenance of an equilibrium critical for the well-being of the corals. Algae on the reefs are a main consumer of the nutrients present in the water above. As the algae utilize the nutrients, they increase in biomass and this in turn is kept under control through the grazing activities of herbivores on the reef such as sea urchins and fish. By covering a vast area of coral surface in a day, large schools of grazing fish reduce the ability of algae to proliferate. These large schools are critical in maintaining algal cover to a minimal. The remaining algae contribute to the carbon cycle through the release of photosynthetic products in the form of dissolved organic carbon, DOC, into the water column. The residual fraction of organic carbon that has not dissolved contribute to the particulate organic carbon, POC. Microbes in the water column are able to utilize both the DOC and nutrients. These microbes and the POC are removed from the water by the filter feeding organisms as water passes through such as the polychaete tuberums. Some of the nutrients are recycled, returning to the surrounding water in the form of waste products from the fish and filter feeders. Many corals filter feed as well as gain energy from their symbiotic zooxanthellae and consume plankton, which is also responsible for the uptake of the nutrients. By extending their tentacles, corals are able to trap plankton in the water column. These trapped particles are then transported to the mouth by the cilia at the coral tissue surface. The zooxanthellae residing within the coral tissues use nutrients made available by the coral as a byproduct of their metabolism. In return, the coral gains energy-rich organic carbon as the zooxanthellae metabolize. Corals exude an energy-rich mucus onto the surface, which is used by their associated microbes. Other nutrients and DOC entering the coral reef ecosystem from other sources are also assimilated by the corals and filter feeders on the reef and become incorporated into the system. History of overfishing and continual exploitation of the world's oceanic resources has been consequential for the integrity of coral reefs. Elimination of the herbivorous grazers, such as fish, results in a critical shift of this tightly balanced system. Algal growth is no longer controlled, resulting in an increase in DOC and POC. This increase in available DOC in the system results in raised levels of microbial activity both in the water column as well as at the coral surface. These microbes can potentially become invasive, attacking and killing the coral as indicated. Investigations showed that when microbes are exposed to increased levels of the nutrients phosphate and nitrate and a carbon source glucose, resulting in a direct increase of microbial activity only with the carbon, indicating that microbes are energy limited. Further studies show that increased levels of any carbon source directly result in coral mortality. The result of these studies revealed the visual effect on monastery annularis during the 30-day period. By day 22, the coral was completely killed, and by the end of the 30-day period, a bacterial biofilm covered the coral. Overfishing, combined with increased nutrients such as fertilizers and raw sewage discharge entering the system, exacerbates the level of organic carbon available to the microbes. Increased levels of nutrients in the water intensify the opportunity for infectious water column microbe via the algal pathway. Increased nutrients directly alter the dynamics between the zooxanthellae and their coral host. No longer nutrient limited, the zooxanthellae use the nutrients in the surrounding water column, increasing the level of organic carbon produced and therefore the amount available to the coral and associated microbes. This results in raised microbial activity putting more stress on the coral and threatening its health and survival. As the algae gains advantage over the coral reef, the coral's microbial activity increases dramatically at the boundary between the encroaching algae and coral. Studies suggest that the microbes use the increased organic carbon present by the encroaching algae. The result is positive feedback as both the algae and consequent coral microbes become invasive. A recent investigation demonstrates this process by looking at the oxygen levels around the coral pulps. Oxygen levels were found to be low around coral pulps juxtaposed along the invasive algae due to increased microbial activity while coral pulps distant from the algae have normal levels of oxygen. A low level of oxygen, known as hypoxia, is analogous to suffocation for the coral animal. 
The same coral was later treated with antibiotic ampicillin, reducing the bacteria along the boundary and subsequently restoring oxygen to a normal level. As the coral reef environment degrades, the coral animal reacts by increasing mucus production. Increased mucus production and excretion is a recognized first response by the coral animal to mechanical and physical stress. This defensive strategy is to remove suspended materials such as silt that settle on the coral. Yet, prolonged mucus production can be directly harmful to the coral animal by supplying more organic carbon in the water column for microbial activity and bioerosion processes. More than half of the released mucus is soluble and immediately dissolves in the seawater, providing an energy source for planktonic bacteria. The less soluble fraction accumulates in the water column as marine snow. As the name suggests, marine snow resembles snowflakes suspended in the ocean's water column. Rich in carbohydrates, marine snow is an additional source of energy. As well as microbial activity, the enriched reserve of DOC and POC in the water column further promotes bioerodors. Bioerodors, such as sponges, break down the reef structure. As the coral reef begins to degrade, these bioerosion processes release more organic carbon. Once again, another positive feedback is established. Available organic carbon promotes bioerosion and microbial activity, and this in turn results in more available organic carbon as the reef continues to degrade. This effect can be seen on a recently collapsed reef in Sipadan, Malaysia. The eventual outcome of altering any variables on the delicate balance on coral reefs is an ecological shift from a healthy reef to a complete algal-dominated field. Herbivory, algal biomass, nutrients, and carbon show how intricately balanced their relationship must be maintained in order to preserve the integrity of a coral reef. Altering one of these variables show how it can directly lead to increased microbial activity, subsequent coral mortality, and eventual complete algal coverage.